Wow. I'm trying to think what... It, oh, I, no, I remember what it was now. I was trying to think what ha what we were doing before when Seth started doing those noises during recording and something weird happened. Your bloody uh, observation duty where it says you did those noises, a little thing popped up in the background and started wriggling around. <laughs> oh, you want us to start making noises? I prefer... Uh, I prefer the noise to be greetings everyone and welcome back to the Devil Darlings. Hello. Don't think we can give you that. No, but I just did. Uh, so, last time. Actually, before we even do last time, how many sessions is it that you've missed, Rebecca? How much do we have to catch you up on? That's, that's a good question. I couldn't tell you. I don't think she was here for the kinky bedroom stuff. Oh, no, you, no that would have been so. so much worse if she was here. <laughs> yep, I've already heard that one. It would have been so much worse if she was here for that. Yeah. Oh, it would have been ten times worse. My, my reaction was bad enough just hearing about it. So, yeah, there was that. After they did that, there was the crypt situation where you had to sneak around some zombies that were blind, reacted to sound. You found that they were being fed basically the rotten leftovers as well as what may have just been rotten carcasses of people. Essentially put, it was their waste disposal unit kind of thing. Okay. You then travelled into a hall of mirrors where glancing in would give you a bit of a glimpse into differing versions of you. Versions that have been, could be and were slight possibilities. While it didn't affect too many people, I mean, the Marquis quite literally just saw a pygmy hippo. Uh, Nanza saw both a reverse Minotaur, I guess is the best way to put it, as well as just a quite literal bull. And also just a human. Yeah, just a human just staring back. And Blue quite literally saw the reverse, which would be a giant miniature space hamster, well, a giant space hamster, holding a jar of uh, goop. I think that's actually how Bloob's hamster would see the relationship going between Bloob and Bernard, honestly, thinking that he's bigger Pretty much. than Bloob. The rest, however, did have a bit of a worse reaction, with Miss Keith seeing her tiefling self, Alzuk seeing their bugbear self, Unasaur see Unasaur at first seeing themselves as a kobold and then in another mirror seeing their actual form, which was revealed. To... Yep, which was revealed to be a dragon. And <sighs> with Cog looking into a mirror. And not seeing their past selves, well, at least not at first, they saw a literal mind flayer staring back at them. One that might not have even have been an alternate version of Cog themselves, but just a mind flayer using that technology to see where she was. Where he was. I forget. They, they, them. They, them. Although in a short when all the mirrors were broken, they did see the, their past of gnome self. And you all escaped the corridor after all the shards started forming into what seemed to be a giant golem. Which the vampire seemed a bit confused about because he didn't have control over that. He didn't do that. And you made it into where you are currently, which is a dining room. An area of reprieve during all of this where you all managed to have a bit of a meal. You all found seven thrones at the end, which correspond to the seven generals. We picked up the losty gem. You picked up the, yes, <laughs> you did. Marquis did. And instead of- I did just, first, though. You did first. Oh, no. no, you were- yeah, I first. did. Oh, no, yeah, I think I, I got did, the but it didn't Marquis. have any effect. Oh, yeah. Had no effect. And then I gave it to Marquis. Yes. And it did have an effect, as so it caused him to basically Get a lust for adventure, a lust for uh, exploration. Basically, he just wanted to explore everywhere. 
Wanderlust. So like, maybe we should just put that away. <laughs> and if I recall right, we did also end that session with the only one who was still having second thoughts on the vampires offered to serve him to get their previous forms back, which would be Alzuk. Yeah, Misgif had a pretty lengthy conversation with him. Also, since we did treat this as a short rest, y'all can get your... Did we treat it as a short rest or a long rest? I'm trying to remember. Short rest. Uh, a short rest. Yeah, it was a short rest. Because so, I remember I didn't benefit from it once. <laughs> yeah. So if y'all been missing your HPs, you can roll some of those HP dice to try and get that back. And there is only the one exit in here. The door which you entered in from. Mm. So I would say, how long does a short rest normally last? Four hours, uh, I want to say. Like I think half it's of, half of a be. long rest. Yeah. Let's see how long does a short rest? How does does it for my brain? How long is a short rest? Oh, like an hour. Yeah, a short rest is an hour. It's at least an hour. Yeah. Um, long rest is, I think, eight hours. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so that's why my keep in mind it's going to be like four hours for the short rest because it'll be half the time. But yeah, it's like an hour at least. That could be useful. Mm. Which, <laughs> in older editions, it used to be to roll more hit dies. You have to wait a full hour for each hit die. Or not older editions, but in the survival rule sets. Those are fun, by the way. You ever want you ever want a fun hard campaign? Use survival rule sets. D and D is me. I hear players get rather creative. In those situations. Uh, Goodberry. Goodberry does wonders in those situations. But yeah, so how long are you taking here? It needs to be at least an hour. Probably rest for an hour. Just so we can get that short rest. Just the hour? Okay. But like... I don't know, like... How's everyone doing? Do we need to stay longer? Mainly is looking at the spellcasters. Lanza just puts up a thumb. Ugg also initiates thumb up protocol. Lanza is a conceptual object and therefore Marquis gives a thumbs up. I haven't used either of my spell slots. I've been very conservative. Why do I imagine Bloop just becomes a giant thumb for this? <laughs> oh oh my god, Bloop becomes a thumb out thumb. Of my mouth. I, I was going to unmute myself and go, Bloop forms a th thumbs up. <laughs> Hold on, I, I, have, I have a gift for, for Bloop right now. There we go. <laughs> All thumbs. <laughs> Oh god, that's the actual pun, isn't it, as well? This drops it because they're all thumbs. No, it's a uh, it's, uh, thumb thumb. Thumb thumb. Thumb yeah, spike it. Yeah, but also a term yeah. you uh, can't catch stuff. Uh, oh, if you're yes. like, clumsy, it's your old thumbs. Yep. Yeah. What the devil are we talking about? Spike it. And Bloop turning into a thumb. Oh, yeah, those things. What and the pun, the pun behind... Well, the... the pun behind them. Interesting. Which is when you fail to catch something, you're all thumbs. I've never heard Ooh. that. what? You're all thumbs. No, oh yeah, I've heard all thumbs, yeah. It's a, I think it's more of like a... I can lie. Yes, man. We use it to describe yes. a yes, man. I don't know what other people use it for. 
I have less extort cards than I thought I did. I guess just a British trip. Either way. You all rest up for an hour. There's plenty of food and drinks set out. And as discovered last time, it is pretty much fresh. There's no ill intent behind the food or drink. Miskiff probably still won't eat anything because she doesn't like taking strange food. She lived with a hag, I don't blame her. Yeah, it's the entire cool. reason she's the way she is now is because she stole a cake off the car. If only someone would have cleansed food and drink. <laughs> don't matter. That doesn't matter. That won't work if the food's cursed. I thought we had a strong conversation last session about yeah. how the food isn't cursed and how we did check it and it's not poisoned. And yeah, stuff. but she still doesn't trust it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair? That's okay. right. Oh, yeah, You're legit because, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Yes, because I do remember that Cog took some grapes and basically blended them with the face blender. <laughs> yes. And at this point, if everybody else has eaten, I mean, if... Uh, I mean, all the way to... To see if the dragonborn born turns blue, and if he doesn't turn blue, well, we're good. If he turns purple, that's a whole other situation. Is there meat? Yes, there is. I... What could all be described as if you roasted a whole hog? I generously <laughs> consume some of the meat. I'm just gonna eat this jerky yeah. from my pocket. Not the joints and the feast of meat. Yeah, it's nice. With so a good. very healthy helping of salad on the side. You feel like they may have like slapped a bit of honey on the skin to get a bit extra crispy and sweet. It's kind of like a honey roast ham kind of situation, but a full pig. But yeah, it's delicious. Quite delicious. juicy as well. I actually it's have... Like dry. It's really juicy meat as well. I actually have a very important and quite possibly insensible question, but my curiosity and the inner thoughts are winning. Do minotaurs eat beef? Good question. Oh, it's going to be like that. Eat not gonna chicken. Answer, all right. No, because they're, well, yes, they're ravens. They're not chicken. Different species. I mean, even then, certain species do cannibalize. Mm -hmm. That is true, and one of them being chicken, so it wouldn't matter. But I've never seen a cow cannibalize another cow. There's, of course, oh. assuming that a minotaur is a cow, which they're not, but they've got cow-like features. So I wonder if it's at times awkward. So, interestingly, I, never I, have like, so. I just googled this. Just out of curiosity. The Starion was a meat eater, by the way, in the original story. <laughs> uh, not used for proper fifi, but just as a little side thing. In Dragonland setting, Minotaurs will absolutely not eat beef. Because uh, Oh yeah, but in Dragonlands they're fucking hippies. <laughs> yeah. It's because despite the fact that the, well, no, they prefer eating goats. Mm. But it's also because, you know, the resemblance is just too close to them even to even consider slaughtering cows. Oh, Ah, so they're Hindus. <laughs> no, because they also eat pork. No, that ooh I just did was not a, what you were saying. I was looking at a magic card that had weird wording. Please, I do, well, thank you. what did you say? You know. Okay. Anyways, interesting line of thought. Does a minotaur eat a cow, or will a cow eat a minotaur? Eat or be eaten. That is the way of the universe, is it not? Hmm. Anyways, you know, eat hippos. I hate the fact that I've just. Got I've never. Hippos. I've just stated that I've never actually had a hippo. Not, but however, my Do kids. Turtle are... eat turtle soup. Yes. Um. However, my species is very. Um, <laughs> well, have you ever come across Do an individual such as me? Do turtles eat turtle soup? Yes, but they don't like it. No, <laughs> the, 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 you, it's incorrect. Because you don't eat soup, you drink it. But what if it's frozen? 
We're not having this conversation, Lois, in the sky. Well, then it's a turtle sickle. It's not a uh, soup. I can't argue with that. That actually makes a lot of sense. If soup is but meat juice and water, then it is just but meat popsicle. No, mean... I've had a meat popsicle. Does that mean it's just a smoothie? No, because it's, we're not getting... We are not <laughs> getting to the scientific delegation of what a smoothie is, because that's an entirely different thing. And then you gotta get into a milkshake and all that, and... Most of the terrestrials aren't even going to understand half the foods we bring up. So, at the end of the day, no, I've never eaten hippo, but that's because I've never had the chance to eat hippo. I would 100% try it. My species is very akin, uh, very... We like doing civil war. A lot, actually. It doesn't take a lot for my species to get into a civil war. In fact, our own name gets us into a civil war quite often. Well, there was that incident with the clowns. Mm, the CL. What were we talking about? Uh, CKL. What were we talking about? What we are doing mm -hmm. next? Yes. What are we doing next? There's only a, there's only one door, right? Yes. Wonder. Well, obviously, going through that door. Yes. Well, if we are. Uh, Unless there's any other downtime conversation that we require, I think it is uh, time we get a move on, yes? Mm -hmm. So is there anything anyone else has wanted to do in this room before you exit? Oh, it's good. Um, no, I'm, Unless they I'm... want to gather up those other gems for uh, possible distractions in the future. I feel I like that's a bad idea. I would be very much be interested in uh, what Nanza would be like with the Wrath one. <laughs> it just makes that's... the Barbarian rage even more. I mean, that's... we've already put the Lust gem in the bag of holding. As fun as of an idea as it would be to take the other ones, I feel, you know, being the only person that has been affected by one of them, that it would be a bad idea. Out of Especially... character, am I the only one concerned we might have just made a horny bag man? <laughs> Putting the lost gem in the bag of holding? But we haven't connected it to the bag man, so we're good. He's okay. It's fine for the moment. I'm sorry, but I'm just imagining the next time you open up the bag of holding, you just hear a scream from his eye going, Don't come in! Close the door! <laughs> Close the bag! Haven't you ever heard of knocking? Don't you know what a sock on the handle means? It's a bag of holding, there's no sock! All right. Um, conversations no aside, <laughs> I'm before, not sorry for we, that. Before we talk about Bagman bagging it up in the bag, um, we're opening the door. Okay. Yep. Unless anybody else has anything to do. Yeah. Talk now, forever, rest in peace. No. 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 All right. Yep. Miasma's probably, Not so much a, really open. Miasma's probably got a mouthful of food at the moment, and Alzuk is remaining silent. I mean, he's got a lot to think on. It's fine. You think I can read people emotions? <laughs> he's not. Like, he has a very hard uh, expression to read, though. He's a kobold. This is why Alo the hip and head frills. The hippo man does not understand these emotions, which is probably because he disassociates hard. So, Anyways, we're breaking down the door. Yeah, so, problem yeah. is, Miskif uh, understands that, like what he's feeling all too well. So you open construct of wood and metal is in our way. You open up the door to the next room. 
And as you do so, there is a slight chill that rushes through into the room. Mm -hmm. Kind of like basically when you open the door to a wintry morning and just like the cold air rushes at you. Yes. Those of you with fur or that would be more aligned to like fire type stuff. Or I guess in uh, this case as well, to the Marquise, because I'm assuming the Marquise would be quite layered. Won't feel it as bad as some of the others, but it's still quite nippy. And from what you can see, as you do enter the room, is almost clear like crystal structures lining the walls and the roof and the floor. Freezer room. In here there are just the one door. And it's not even the one that you've entered through. As if you do look behind you, that door is now gone. Hmm. Well, there's no going back in there. The door is the opposite end of the room. But it seems to have a, like a little panel on what seems to be like a handle on a metal section right next to it. Mm -hmm. What does Cog remember? from the blueprints, good lay. Are you checking the blueprints? Yes, I'm going back into my memory. <laughs> okay. So as you access <laughs> C slash <laughs> C slash uh, room outlays slash and basically you get the joke there. Is anyone else doing anything well, Cog? checks their memories. Can I like sniff around to see if anything smells weird in here? You sniff around to see mm -hmm. if anything smells weird. Uh, make me a perception check, I believe with advantage given uh, the smell. Situation. Yeah, keen senses. Yes. Oh, that was... Well, I think this is how this game's gonna go. What? Look in chat. Hang on, I was. Look where I walk. My phone. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think that's an indicator. There's a tingle to your nose, but you're not quite sure why. This is. This room makes my nose tingle. Oh god, Miss Keith has found cocaine. <laughs> Don't want a fucking sable on cocaine. They're already crazy. Is anyone else doing anything? No. Okay. Nope. I'm waiting to see what uh, Cog can remember. Uh, okay, so the one other person we need to ask is Blue, but you don't have anything in this room before Cog pulls up the memories. What is in this room? What can I see? Basically, it's cold. You feel like the cold air nipping at you, almost kind of like mm -hmm. starting to freeze up parts of you. There seems to be large, clear structures, like crystalline, lining the walls, floor and roof. There's the door at the other end with a panel, and below it's what seems to be like a large metal section with a handle. Yeah, I'll wait for Cog. Okay. Cog. Mm hmm? This room helps power the magic in this castle. The designs pretty much state that the little the handle is a little pull-out bucket type of thing 
to deposit the materials in, to power the magic in the castle, as well as to power the door. It is also said that the vampire himself usually doesn't come in here, but will send servants down to, to do the powering the, for the castle. So in other words, we destroy this. Then the vampire will be forced to face us. So and well, all the my players outside. Mm. And Cog, what is it? Uh, apologies, Cog, yeah. what is it? Magical generator room. Let's go, kind of like... Looking uh, at this room, could Cog figure out a way to disable the magic to the other parts of the castle except for the door? Make me a investigation check. Investigation. I mean. Twenty one. Given how much the magic's already been working in this place, you feel like it's probably got enough juice to keep on going. For how long? You don't know. Is there a way to cut off its connection to the rest of the thing, so even if it's got juice still in it, it can't supply the power? What, are you telling me they didn't build an off switch? You always build an off switch. You never know if something's going to go psychotic and try to kill you. Which actually, now that I think about it, that's the more fun option. Don't build uh, off switches. Through your investigations, Cog, with the blueprints, you'll know that there is such thing as an off switch, but it's not in this room. Well, the off switch isn't in this room. It's that other room, if you remember. There is also. Although, although I don't... Uh, and that's... There's also just sure. a slight little note as well on the blueprints. It seems that the architect himself doesn't quite know where the magic comes from or what these crystallized structures are, as it was a guarded secret. All he knows is they have been supplied by someone. Interesting. I mean, can't we just break it? It's like a, what, 50-50 chance it'll explode, Cog? Yes, and magical explosions are a bit different from physical explosions. Haha, <laughs> that's a good chance in my books. Although we may all die. Or worse, get turned into goldfish. <laughs> I've already been transformed once. As you say that, Marquis... Yes. Maybe an icon to check. Yeah, no, you don't notice. Sorry, double rolled there, I apologize. It's fine. <laughs> Is it just a freaking whimsy comet that's managed to get caught and mined? Using Oh, oh, oh! It's all right. With those lower kind of rolls, Marquis doesn't know. Should I roll? Marquis doesn't like know that? shit. I don't know shit. I don't know if this is the whimsy comment or not. If it is, it's all right. Y'all are suffering Thursday, anyways. <laughs> you can roll one. And if it's a whimsy well. comment, it'll mean Lee's thrown it at us a couple of times now. Consider it, given the no, other spell you, drama you game. Know, you know why she's thrown that at you? Because mm. I threw it at her. <laughs> That's why I threw it at her, and then she threw it at you. What is the whimsy comet? Wild magic whimsy comet. comet. Oh. I was about to say, we're yeah. about to find out because uh, Cog. Mm. These aren't ash structures. You've seen these floating around the space. It does seem like someone has provided the samples of a Whimsy Comet here and has just let this whole room become as if it was a Whimsy Comet. Oh god, it's crystallized a lair. This shit's volatile. Oh no! <laughs> We're gonna blow up! 
My own creation has come back to bite me in the ass! <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if that's what this is, a different world, but fuck! <laughs> Uh, it's alright. Still very volatile, so it could explode. Hmm. Okay, we're not in the tail. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I, I need to give you. I don't have it on me, but I need to send you the full actual list. It gets pretty bad. Oh, I found the 1D100 it's... list for Wild Magic to use for it. Oh, oh! I, 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 we're in my version. There's a custom list. Um, it, it gets, it gets pretty fucking bad. <laughs> it gets like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you guys didn't get the bad ending. I mean, um, technically, they almost got the bad ending in the Wednesday game when they encountered a whimsy comet. Because our ship shit. turned into a slod. Also. This dude, this vampire is a fucking idiot. This, is a fucking this shit can rip apart time and space. Which actually, you know, Domino being one of the Thar gods makes sense if he's the one that's supplying. Yeah. I don't know if we know that he's supplying. Yeah. Look, you Look I mean, if he's working for Domino, then I am. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Everyone say <laughs> <laughs> hi, Mama Dion. Everyone says hi. <laughs> the way your mum reacted there, I, I the only thing I can imagine is her like the. the I do need a better the chair. <laughs> the uh, the the Skyrim guards when they figure out that the um, Red Guard use scimitars, they have curved swords. Curved swords. Uh, so, what are y'all doing about this room? Are we going to leave it the fuck alone? <laughs> Probably would be best not to touch any of the crystals. Although it could come in handy, but I'm not. Isn't the floor here. crystal? It's the floor it's crystal. It's lined thinly, but it's not as big as like the giant crystalline structures where you assume mm. most of the magic is. Mm. Oh. So, so. Well, I'm. Oh, go on, go. For the most part, we should be. F Fine. It's not a lot on the floor. Oh, wonderful. So, no bricky smashy thing. No. I sincerely Sad smashy don't dragonborn like noises. Smash these. Sad barbarian that noises. Oh my god, you were literally a bull in a china shop. I mean, <laughs> I already made that joke. This joke has been made already. Yeah, I made that joke last session. It's funny because I have more levels in fighter than in barbarian. <laughs> uh, oh, you man. could break them, or but it might explode, and you could be turned into a newt. Hmm. Hmm. And not the fire very newt, just newt. Wait, isn't that salamander? Salamander. Newt. I think they're kind of the same thing. What is the difference between a lizard and an amphibian? Uh, the ability to breathe underwater. Usually the ability to breathe through the skin. Interesting. Instead of through the lungs. Can you breathe through your skin? Who? Una. I am not an variant. amphibian. But you're also not a reptile. One does not mutually uh, um, exclude the other. That is true. Well, they're not a dinosaur either. Except you're a draconic, which is its own species, isn't it? Are you a reptile? What are you, Unasaur? Let's move Who on from this conversation you? and deep just figure out what we're doing. Uh, My deep growl did not come through already. the mic. No. It did not. No, it did not. We're uh, already moving towards the door. The Marquis has so don't... many existential yeah. questions. Okay. The Marquis is. Existential questions. He is. He is the embodiment. The so... uh, Marquis popped out of nothingness and was like, What am I? Who am I? What is existence? You head towards the door.
This is going to be fun. So you head towards the door. That's what I get. I'm assuming you avoid any other crystalline structures. Um, oh, yes. You go to open the door. The door doesn't open. Wait, you said there was like a little... You, yeah, I was about to say, you said there was a little slot on the door that we can open up, right? Like a little uh, hook hatch thing that can be pulled out. Oh, like a hatch thing. Okay, so is it like a look through slot or like a little pull out hatch? Like, I'm I'm seeing a look. To, I'm seeing like a look think, through hatch. But the best way to think about it, uh, that I could describe that you'll understand. Mm -hmm. Think the deposit buckets on Molly. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So it's there. So we're gonna pull that. Does that pull? Does that open? Yeah, it pulls open. It's a deposit bucket. Can I, can I see what's inside? Can I see the other side, or you can't see the other side, and it is empty. But it's like looking into bucket. Is there any kind of like residue inside of it that could give us a hint what might go inside? I don't like thinking of something called the deposit bucket and then the word residue. There's a little bit of like a <laughs> shimmer going on inside the bucket. Same kind of shimmer that the crystals give off. Mm. Push it back in. Does it go flush against the door when I push it back in? Or like, it's not on the door itself. It's like to the does side. Does something of the door. change? Oh, okay. But does anything change if I push it back in? Just making sure that it is what it is, and you we're push not it like back in. it's not some living fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Push it back in, and the panel above lights up and comes up saying zero percent. Do we have to power it? Interesting. I think it's powered by the crystals. That would That's something sense. shimmery, in it? Sorry. Oh, wait, is that a running theory? I was just going to shove Bloob in there. See if maybe she could get to the other side. But no, that might... Is this a case that we're going to have to do some mining? Anybody got a pickaxe? Lock and stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a serious question. I don't have a pickaxe. Do you think I do? Do you? No. You're a sable that was a tiefling that has magical hands and a whole bunch of other things with a bag of holding. I'm not surprised by what you have or don't have. Well... Except the ability to recognize that you are aware of tiefling, which is, you know, you should see you a therapist a and, then, and then... Don't the open physician. this bucket with them again. I, do it clear. I just opened the, the bucket and it requires stuff for the bucket. Um, wait, how big are the crystals? They're probably around the size of... Some of them are like the size of Alzuk themselves. Whereas some of them do get a bit bigger and look a lot more like the size um, that you'd see from um, Unosaur and such. Is the wall bucket, I'm going to call it the wall bucket right now, because that's what the it is bucket. at this moment. Um, the bucket. Is the bucket Arzuk sized? Or do we have to break them? Not Arzuk, but the crystals. Although you'd we could to... break Arzuk if we need to, but you'd have to break, the have to break them. I guess they get to break them as they want it. Is this free labor? Is that what this is? It's no, I feel like this is Lee this. wanting to push the wild magic, so we have to mine the crystals <laughs> wow. to, like... Wow. <laughs> Call me out. Is she wrong? You're not denying it. I feel like this is... There's an in-game reason. It's simply put, the door locks, so otherwise the slave would just open the door and walk back out and be like, fuck this. The slave needs to mine and put the stuff in to get his freedom. Slave can't go like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Exactly. Is there a break slave the door? in the room? No. 
There is no slave in the room. Correct. We could try to break the door. Yes. Uh, correction, there is a slave in the room. It's green. You got to stop referring to the sable as a slave. She's a yeah, lovely individual. Like she just like, kind of looks at herself like, I'm not green. I'm fairly certain she's green. I think the gif may be. Um... I mean, I've got. Oh, am I mixing up my colors again? I've what got some blue. Sable? I've got some. I've got some white. I've got, I've got white fur, and I've got some blue in my fur. But like, I point to the cobalt. You still, you, can, you, should, you still probably shouldn't call him a slave. You, just... you most definitely shouldn't call him a slave. Also, he's not green, he's apple-coloured. Um, in that, uh, Una, so if you would like to try to break down the door, while you're or doing that, we should probably prep for a, a plan B when you inevitably crystal. fail. You don't have a good history. Just break a piece of crystal off? Are you breaking you a piece of crystal off? Does anyone have a hammer? Like he is. I have a big ass axe. That works. I have a pickaxe. I am going to find something to hide behind. It's me, isn't it? (laughs) No, something away (laughs) from you, because if this goes off as wild magic, I don't want to be you know in the way. Very complicated about this one. We do have an individual that could just pick up the crystal and contain it within them. I just mean the act of breaking the crystal in general. Yes, but I mean, they're plasmoid. Why don't if we it just explodes, send the They're not going to die. You're not it doing doesn't... that because if they explode, I've got to rebuild it and that's going to take for fucking ever. Hmm. No offense, Cole. Mostly you'd be rebuilding it, but it is what it is. Mm. Actually, I don't think I'd be doing any of it now that I think about it. Still don't think we would would be able to sever the crystal just by putting it inside them. So the, the, the act of breaking the crystal could set it off in general, even just to get that piece. Wait, but we can... Wait, are these crystals connected to the wall, or can we just pick them up? Um, I seem to be confused on this. I thought some of them weren't connected. We can just pick them up. I mean, according to you, walls are a figment of your imagination, so... Y- yes, but this is this is a Santa question. Sorry, I was still a character voice. <laughs> <laughs> Lay? Yes, what, sorry? Uh, Santa, Santa question. Um, are the crystals connected to the wall, or uh, because the way you described it sounded like the some wall, of them were not? The floors and the ceiling. Is any okay, of them? They are con- they are connected. We do have to break them. None of them are already pre. There's not like a pile of them or anything. No, there's like no that. pile. Okay, cool. So are so we yeah, trying to break the door or the crystals? Uh, door first, then crystals. <laughs> I'll... Why don't you give the but door I a think, try for a I think change? Miskif is breaking a crystal anyways, so... Uh, um, is... I do not have the strength to break this crystal. If they want to try and break the door, go for it, but you... like... I will take my big fuck-off axe and try to smash the door in. Okay. You swing your axe towards the door. And as you do so... You see the shockwaves come out of your axe, over the door, like ripples on a pond when you throw a stone in. Only for it to start closing What's this back trap in. again? Only for it to start closing in and race up your axe, down the handle and through you. Oh, I thought so. It's like one of I those completely cartoons. forgot about that! Wow, we haven't seen that one in a hot minute. So what happens then? The door takes no damage. And uh, the answer is left a bit shaken up. It's the gate. It's it's what yeah. happened when you tried to kick the gate. Yeah. I thought so. Um, if this place is meant to keep slaves in, it wouldn't just break. Especially given that you have seen that they will enslave warriors and such as well. Hippo. What? 
Put your hand on the on the door and smack yourself. If we are, if we strike ourselves, maybe we will go through us to the door. So I put my hand on the what? <laughs> on the uh, on the object barring our path. Oh, the construct of metal. Yes. So you put your hand on cog. <laughs> nope, not working. Um, <laughs> you know what, though? Actually, now that I think about it, that is an absolutely idiotic plan, although funny. I was just trying to see if I could get you to strike yourself. You could have just asked. Although I'm concerned that I that's did. what you're into, and well... That's surprisingly. Well, I guess you did. Um, all right, and he's he, <laughs> Marquis is uh, not striking himself. Um, as Marquis turns around, so I suppose it's mining time. That if we don't do anything in this place, loses power. Sure, now that I think about it, this place loses power. That could be. Are we on the time schedule? Oh, we are. It's being invaded, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are on a time schedule. All right. Well, for those of you that like hitting things, there's crystals for you to hit. Have a smacking good time. Why don't you take your little boomstick and try to shoot a piece of the crystal off? You ever heard of Ricochet? Yes. Good! Uh, and uh, the Marquis is going to shoot uh, at one of the crystals. If this is a magical ricochet, <laughs> this will be fucking hilarious. So you shoot I slowly put my shield up. Again, hiding behind something. I will also slowly <laughs> put my shield up. <laughs> so you shoot at the crystal. I should state is at this point that you see Minicog pops out of the hat and puts up his little shield. <laughs> uh, do you need me to actually roll the hit? Uh, no, because it's a stationary object. It's not like it can move out the way. Actually, in base TV, you still have to roll rage attacks. <laughs> Stationary objects, which is always fucking funny, thank you. Uh, I was gonna say, if I miss this, that's Jesus. Fucking Marquis got cataracts or some shit. But what I do need you to roll is a d6. Yep. Yeah. Oh, these are, oh, these are definitely not my rules. My rules had a constitution save, though. This will be interesting. Alternate universe whimsy comic, let's go. That's a three. Free, okay. So as the bullet flies out and strikes the crystal, it does knock off a good chunk of the crystal itself, but the bullet kind of remains frozen there before it falls off. The bullet's gaining the same sheen that you saw the inside of the bucket have, before it does its deed, start ricocheting and bouncing around the room. Okay. Start going faster and faster, almost hard to keep your eyes on. Before it bounces off a corner. Actually. And it strikes Miski. <laughs> Miski, you aren't taking any damage from this. It's rather the bullet. At this point, it's just become pure concentrated wild magic and it's absorbed into you. Make me a console. Oh, yeah. oh dear. <laughs> you said that there would be no con save, but there is a con save. There is a con save, hey! Uh, Still though, this is interesting. Nobody tried to shoot the whimsy comet in mine. <laughs> <laughs> what happens, Lee? Yeah.
Sorry about that if I knock knock. Um, what happens essentially put is that's a meet and beat. So nothing happens. You feel like something's about to happen and it just X's out your body with a shudder. It's oh, just like, like an unsatisfying sneeze. Yeah. She just kind of like tenses up for a minute as it hits her. <laughs> and then just flops. Because <laughs> like, I'm using the same DC for these that I used for the comet last time I did it. Hog! Yes? MAGICAL AMMUNITION! Don't. <laughs> Just time. don't. Don't. Please. Uh, are you wanting to collect some? For my safety, Maybe please. Like but also, wild magic ammunition. Do you think how fun that would be? Maybe a fun party favor. This guy's just looking at card like, world of please no. and cheese. Then there'd be two realities made out of cheese. Am the I the bad just guy left in this him story? chained up in the hells. No, not the bad guy. But then, like, no. we wouldn't be here if we just left him there. Also, I would have eventually gotten bored. Um, on that note, that worked, but very limitedly. How big is the piece? Whiskey sized. Mm. Who, who wants to pick it up? No. Not Somebody touching it. One magic crystal for the day. I'll yeah, pick it up. Okay. <laughs> so, we would have thought you got to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Make me a con save. Alcoraki. Okay, okay. Oh no. <laughs> Hiding behind something again. He explodes into a fireball, wow, which he only gets saw. half damage for. <laughs> so, Unisaw, you yes. go to pick up the crystal. You just hold it. And for, from everyone else's point of view, the rainbow like sheen from it spreads over Unisaw as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll me 1d100. Quite beautiful this way. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, Sheen... Unus was just screaming. The sheen fades and returns to the crystal. And nothing seems different outwardly. <laughs> Put it in the bucket. Put it in the bucket. There is one thing I do need to ask. <laughs> Did you drink any alcohol in the previous room? No, I only ate the meat. Okay. <clears throat> Put it in the bucket. For some reason, it's hard to describe, but you feel like you've gained a higher tolerance to alcohol. Roll me 5d6. You are immune to being intoxicated by alcohol for 12 days. What is the superpower and how can sucks. I learn it? <laughs> Isn't that the whole point as you drink alcohol, though? I suppose so. I have alcohol. Can you pour me one? Just imagine it had the opposite effect on water. I, mean, I, I just saw a lump oh of God. dog fur, and I thought it was a massive fucking spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wolf spiders! Hey! Fucking love those. Do you guys get wolf spiders over there? Fucking no. no. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they get about the size of a dog. And that's not an exaggeration. A big wolf spider is about the size of a bulldog. So we need to burn your country. Small, like a French bulldog. If you're gonna burn, we're going to burn. You gotta start yeah. with the Australia. Burn and eat the countryside. I, mean, if I just keep hearing. I mean, if anybody's doing the burning, it's us. I keep hearing mm. the wolf spider, and all I think is Bertha. Yeah. Yeah, Bertha. Yes, the sheen returns God to the crystal. God rest her precious soul.
Are you depositing the crystal? How shiny is the crystal? It's Put it in the bucket before anything like else happens. Pearl luminescence, I believe the term is. Like, basically that kind of sheen that you get on, like, a pearl. I pearl feel like Miskeef <laughs> is uh, glaring daggers at me. Yes. She's like, she literally says, put it in the bucket before anything else happens. Does, does, does the, um, does the crystal, oh, like, feel powerful? Feels magical. Thank you. So I thought you took a bit longer thinking about it. It's just like, I'll bite you again. Without, without, uh, hesitation, I put the, the crystal in the bucket. <laughs> it's just, just a threat of being bitten. Nope. So there is a miskeep sized crystal in the bucket. If we put the bucket into the wall, at what percentage is it now? Comes up saying 4%. We're going to be here for a while. I don't think I have enough ammunition for all of these crystals. Really? Mamba is just going to go and uh, fucking rampage on the wall. This is taking too goddamn Break. long. <laughs> Break all hammer. of the crystals, my bullfriend. I was trying to and, work and... it out how much it should be. Because if I were like, yeah, Misky for big 10%, then you could just knock one down that bit like Unasaurus size, be like, yep, that'll do it. Marquis is, by the way, taking out his umbrella and opening his umbrella as Nanza. He's just fucking going on a rampage. Okay. So, Nanza, you swing at the first crystal. Yes. Me I'm just hiding there. behind whatever comes cover I can get. Yes. That's ready. Yeah, you see the shimmer try to come up. But you literally just. I am literally too again. angry. <laughs> <laughs> you have a magic proof mine at all. You swing the shimmer back into the crystal that you were hacking apart. And the chunk that falls oh, off of this one could be described as being probably. As large as Miasma is. So quite a large chunk. I was saying as both Nanza and Unaso appear immune to the magic, um, I think they should continue the good work. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm Nanza still... literally just smashing. <laughs> I'm still hiding behind this thing. Just to... Does... Here's my question, though, uh, Nanza. As this piece breaks off, are you letting it fall to the floor first, or are you just catching it? I uh, am probably trying to baseball bat it into the bucket. Okay, uh, make me a... Ooh, dex check. Dex check? What's volatile? We don't fucking know. <laughs> Exactly why Miss Gif is hiding. I'm not too angry to care. <laughs> Seven. You try and swing. You to... do something then. <laughs> you try and swing it into the. I did do something. As, as you swing your axe, it doesn't quite make it and slides on the floor before it. What do you want me to do? Cast oh, arms of Hadar on it, like. Yes. <laughs> I was specifically aiming at that uh, people who were commentating about my bad swinging. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't that one, I would have had it. If it weren't that one, I would have had it hit someone, but it wasn't in that one. <laughs> After that, I just I don't care if it hits the bucket or not. I just keep wailing <laughs> at the walls. Okay. Uh, Mar Marquis looks at the miasma-sized crystal and looks looks at Miskeef. What? Can't you carry like ten times your own weight? Isn't that a thing ants can do? I'm not an ant. Pretty large to be an ant. Oh, were you an only child? I I think so, but that that not. I... Wrong type of ant. I'm an uncle of 237, one of which is a starfish. If I had a nose bridge like a human, I would be pinching it. I don't fucking know if I'm an only child. I don't even know who my parents are. 
Anyways, it's probably a bad idea for me to get transformed into anything. One, because I'm probably psychotic. And two, because I'm probably psychotic. Cog! Mm. I trust you more with magical stuff. Because I'll probably blow up. Oh, do you want me to pick it up? <laughs> yes, please. I love the fact that everyone's tried to avoid picking up the crystals. Why is he to pick it up? I do not have good luck with magic. <laughs> I I'm will here to correct you. I am literally Hulk smashing them. <laughs> I pick I will, up the you crystal. You do not understand. There is a reason the cog is there's a reason that the gods gave marquise the god the cog is because cog has blown up so much stuff uh, because marquis has blown up so much stuff and he's driven into a fucking sun like can i, I can i use mage hand to start putting some of the crystal in the bucket lunasaur picks up the crystal yeah but there's like you're chunking off several bits of crystal like eh, cog will pick some up I'll just use Mage Hand so, to like throw little bits in. I'll say, given the uh, Nat Twenty, you figured out the way, way with your swings to not be affected by the wild magic as you're chopping. As that's what I normally do for these kind of saves anyway. If you get a Nat Twenty, you remove that shit. Um, hmm. Not for the day. So we'll do it in kind of a like an order with this. Cog, you got to pick up first. You right. got to pick up the miasma sized chunk. Can you make me a concept? Of course. Natural 20 for a 24. Okay. Cog is immune to you. <laughs> I trust Cog with magic stuff. I don't have good magic stuff. Can you make me a second one for your mech? Sure. That's an eight. Because <laughs> we've implied before with this stuff, if ships can be affected, ships, why yeah, not inanimate this? objects can be affected. Yep. Uh, roll me because the skipjack almost turned into something. Yep. Roll me a hundred, though, would you, Cog? Yeah, we know ships can be affected because Lee turned ours into a fucking slab. Eighty. Mm -hmm. Eighty. <laughs> You can, you can blame me for that. I'm the one that introduced this mechanic to Lee. <laughs> so, luckily, this isn't going to affect too much as you tend to speak telepathically anyway. Mm. But you notice all the language options in your mech have changed. Roll me a d4. Oh, boy. I was going to say, is Royce now sentient? Four. No, but uh, four. Yeah. Yep. Your mech now can only the like. Bit, yeah, I can hear myself. I was always mic. It speaks it Yiddish. Uh, no. the The only language that is displayed in your mech now is deep speech for four days. Jokes on you! I know deep speech. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You've got a lucky one. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Just cog being like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit's got from cog. This is going to be annoying to reprogram. <laughs> <laughs> Miski. Mm -hmm. You're trying mage hand on some of the smaller pieces, yes? Yeah, just to lift them and drop them in. Because, okay. like, she doesn't want to touch them with her um, paws. So, like, I don't know if you're using my lore or anything, but I should state mage hands are affected. Um, I don't know if you're using my lore or anything on the object, but magic is also affected by it. See, I had an idea for this. Yeah, go with your idea. Go your with your idea. Your mage hand goes to pick it up. Your mage hand starts to glow with the shimmer. And through the magical connection, you start to glow with the glimmer. Oh, no, not again! It's magic sickness. Go with the con save. Mm. It's like, do it again! <laughs> no! <laughs> the hundredth time. <laughs> 63. I can't believe Miss Keeve is dead. <laughs> oh! <laughs> They're like, oh no, oh, not no. again! Oh no. Oh no. Remember when you were saying uh, shit can get nasty, Santa? 
Uh, roll me yes! a, a d6 uh, there if you would. Actually, wait, no, wait, not a d6. Let me calculate this. Because this will affect everyone in the room. Well, potentially everyone in the room. Oh, Seven, God. eight, nine, ten. Roll me a d10. Everybody. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. Not a d10. A d12. I don't like why this keeps getting higher. Because um... I'm having to count literally every character in the room, including NPCs. A10. A oh no! I think I know which one this is! Seven. Mid-Eve explodes into a fireball. Yeah! Okay. No, it's worse. Remind me again what Minicog is. Uh, Minicog is a little white mouse in the top hat. Yep. You feel something in your top hat just fall onto your head. And then a confused, distressed, and angry squeak. Uh, we're lifting up the top hat to look at Minicog. Minicog is frantically spinning in circles. And something, what fur color is Minicog? Uh, white. You spin something me slightly, right round, whitely fur right round. falls down your large snout and rests between your nostrils. As you see a tiny mouse arm. Minicog lost a limb. Hmm. Like a record, baby, right round, round, 63. Round. Someone loses a limb. We're going to take the limb. We're going to look at Minicog. We're going to take Minicog in hand. Hmm. going to stick the limb back into place. Does it stay? It falls off. Just like... Did... Ah. I have the perfect image for what Minicog is like right now. Cog, we need the super glue again. Again. Also, I feel like Minicog need... lost a limb. I feel like I need to state this. With ties with all the other stuff, you take one of my character's limbs, I took one of your character's limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, gonna, uh, I'm gonna put this in um in D and D chat. This is essentially all I see from Minicog without their arm. And that is Namza energy. <laughs> the shimmer fades from you. Got, um, yeah. We are taking a moment. Uh, by the way, Minicog will remember this. Miss Keith, he holds grudges. Oh, oh is like, I'm good. <laughs> you can but you feel you a pair see... of small angry eyes probably locking onto you. Well, I didn't do nothing to you. Not on purpose. All well, right, we'll get this fixed when we get back to the ship. For now, um, he's just got the tiny arm. He just puts Minicog back on his head, puts the top hat down. He has the tiny arm in his hand. He goes over to Cog. Cog, can you just keep that safe? It just goes into one of the many hidden apartments. <laughs> Compartments. It's all right. We've been here before. We'll be here again. Last He's not time... even the first mini Cog. It needs Last to be... time it was his tail. Yes. It needs to be stated as well. One number higher, it would have been the bird in your hat. One number lower, and it would have been Bernard. We have a bird in my hat? Yeah, the one, the old familiar that tried to oh, eat Oh yeah, the fucking hawks! 
<laughs> oh, that poor thing. Mini Kong is going to take out so much of his rage on that poor fucking thing. Uh, I completely forgot that he was in my hat. Mini Kong picks up his lost arm, turns to the Falcon, and just slowly lowers your hat back down, Santa. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> oh. You don't know who or what a Quan Chi is, but you feel like he's doing a Quan Chi to the Falcon. And for those oh, who don't know your Lord. Mortal Kombat, that means he's quite legit taking his lost limb and he's beating the Falcon with it. He's beating it, yeah. Yep. It's all right. Last time we were here, he was a hedgehog. But of course, we now have to go to Unasaur, who is also picking up some of the shards to put in a bit. Yes. Cold save. Oh, no. The 100. And if it's a 63, someone's losing another limb. <laughs> it was close. Oddly enough, this isn't that bad of a one. As the cold begins to fade. The earth starts to become a bit more damp. Almost as if it's like a pleasant spring rain. Rather than the biting cold of winter. So it feels like the season has changed one over. Only enough, it doesn't even give you like a time limit. It just says the season changes by one in a 50 foot radius around you. Which is wider than what the room is. It's just instantaneous. What, what yep. season does it change? And then it'll to? stay that spring season. <laughs> yep, it's gone from winter to spring. Uh, Bloop, you are no longer feeling like I you're about like to it. freeze over. Nice. I do not like this. This is very pleasant. Actually, I'm intrigued. And I do have a curiosity. What would happen if Bloom picks it up? We will Let me pick it up. I'll pick it up. Yeah. Let's see. We will state that the I... miasma sized trunk was 30% 30, 30 worth, so it's up to 34. Plus the other shards that you all have put in, you're probably hovering around 45%. And you know what? Since everybody's picked up a. Uh, I'll pick one up too, since Bloom's picking okay. one up. I'm not going to pressure. Oh, Bloom. I sent a feeling yeah. FOMO. <laughs> Bloop and Marquise make me concerts. Wonderful. Bloop has failed. Oh no. Marquise oh, has failed. Oh no. <laughs> Marquise and, uh, failed. This is going to be bad. Rebecca, can I get you to also roll me a con save just quickly? Uh, second one. This time it's for Bernard. So Bernard has also failed. Is that two D100s then? Uh, yes, but we'll quickly do Santa's first, given his role is. Okay. That way I'm not getting confused. Marquise, as you start to lift up the shard and you are overcome with the shimmer-like effects, you drop the crystal Shiny. and start to lay down. Oh, no, you don't even lay down. I remember how it is. You drop the crystal as you start to feel extremely tired. Oh, yeah, then Marquis just standing there. Yep, because that's what says exists. You become very tired. Deactivated. Yep, yep Marquis has deactivated. So you see, everyone to everyone else, Marquis has just stood upright, dropped the crystal, is wide-eyed, and he's probably doing nothing. Because I don't think Marquis even snores, does he? Uh, he does, but he... No, no, not when he's sleeping. Only when he's fake sleeping. Uh, it is just pure, this is the only point that you are ever going to hear him be silent. However, I should state, he just, all of his weight is just downwards, as he's just like, into the ground now. No, it's not is that all it took to make him be quiet? Do I need to bite him? To wake him up? Those that have roomed with Marquis in the past, which would... I believe is only blue and cog in this sense. Uh, uh, yeah, but Jack isn't here. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you would know that he's fallen asleep. Yep. You will also hear sounds of like somebody opening up like a basement door and going down. It's, you just hear Mini Kong just like thwacking on his head with his arm. <laughs> yeah, Mini Kong just po like just opens the door of the top hat, looks out. There's like some angry squeaks, like somebody whose car has just stopped working, fucking closes the door. So you just hear like sounds of someone working on an engine or some shit. Oh, Hold on, I <laughs> I got a mental image now. I need to fucking show. Bloop, the hundred. An actual hundred. Oh, shit. That could probably either be very good or very bad. Yeah, that's, huh. that's what I'm doing. Um, on mine, on mine, that leads to a literal black hole. I don't know what it is on legs. Oh, it isn't a black I... hole on mine. Oh, but it good. is something interesting. So for that, I don't know how it would even work with this. Because I now need to see what happens if you cast this spell in a tiny room. Browser, please let me open up another tab. Thank you. Oh, what was it? The spell called again. That. Okay, so it can't be that one because the room is too small. Something tells me that this is going to be literally this case of everything is going to be too small. Oh no! <laughs> this one actually works. Because the room is pretty much a 30 foot cube. So. As you shimmer, the ground begins to rumble. Grass begins to sprout out through the crystalline structures. And trees begin to grow around you all. A fog huh. begins to fill out as well. And there's some of the trees growing. Some of them begin to uproot themselves from the ground. And take form as dryad-like monsters. Everyone can roll me an Arcana check if they wish. I know that we have gone on record before state in other games stating that you can't use this to identify spells, mm -hmm. but we've always done it in this game as being able to identify spells with this. Cool, cool. It makes sense oh. if you have knowledge of magic to be able to yeah. do it. Uh, I'm assuming that Marquis isn't because Marquis is asleep. Yep. So, uh, Cog, what did you mm. get as well? Oh, uh, yeah. Arcana. Hold on. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, as of yet, Nanza and Unasaur, you've got no idea. Mm. Yes. Cog, you are also unsure. Blue, like you is about trying to wake Marquis up. <laughs> you instinctively know because this one did bounce off you. And Miss Keith, you've heard about this. Druid's Grove was just cast. Druid's Grove? We're in a Druid's Grove. As long as Kaga doesn't show up, we're good. Filthy fucking Druids. As you say that, all the uh, Dryads just turn to you. Please don't antagonize the tree people. Hmm. And before we get to what the dryads are doing, roll me the other one, the hundred, and let's see what happens to Bernard. Forty-seven. Mm. 
What does this do? Okay. So as you're there, just watching as the trees grow blue because you're holding this crystal. All of a sudden, you feel free. Hang on. Is that that? Let me just check. You don't feel it. You just feel something off. And then in your connection, Bernard just shouts out, I didn't want siblings. What is this? What do you mean, siblings? Everyone else can see, floating around in Bloob's gelatinous gloop now, seem to be three similar forms to Bernard. Bernard what is this? Pretenders to the thrones! Bernard just cast a mirror image. Oh no. It's more it's mildly concerning. <laughs> but Bloob, you can now deposit your crystal. Which will take us up to sixty percent. The Dryads seem to be waiting on your instructions, Bloob. Since you were the one that summoned the growth. Uh, pick up the crystals. Let's get these guys to help. The four dryads will nod. We'll start to pick up the crystals. How long does Drew's Grove even last for? <laughs> you really should look that up. Oh, Druid's Grove. Because it was either Druid's Grove or Temple of the Gods. And Temple of the Gods would not fit in this room. It needs to be 120 foot. But Druid's Grove can be as little as 30 foot. It lasts for 10 minutes. Or sorry, it lasts for 24 hours. 10 minutes is the casting time. <laughs> yeah, Druid's Grove's going to be here for the full day. The next slave to enter that room is going to be very confused. Especially given these things only obey the one that summoned them. Uh, their con is a flat D20. So, we have a fail, a fail, a pass, and a fail. The one that passed will do to deposit the crystal in straight away, and it will take us up to 70%. The other three, well, let's see what happens to them first before they deposit. The first one. You don't really notice anything weird going on until it offers its mouth and pink bubbles begin to flow out as it deposits the crystal. The second one, uh... <laughs> what? we'll come back to that one, uh, just quickly roll the third one. Uh... The third one just kind of shimmers, gets an odd look and deposits their crystal. Uh, there seems to be just an aura of just blessed energy around you all now. Yeah. Arcana rolls can be made. But this, given what this sounds like, is going to probably be a high. Something cast hollow. You were saying something high? Yes. Oddly enough. The ones that passed before <laughs> didn't pass this time, aside from Marquise, who was still asleep. And the ones that failed passed. And this Wild worries magic. me, given that two of them are barbarians. 
Who's the other barbarian? Is not a barbarian. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, but you, I am a paladin. paladin. Yes. I keep forgetting my class. I keep forgetting. In you that case, you like a barbarian. In that case, like you would barbarian. actually properly know this as well. Mm -hmm. This aura feels like a blessing because, essentially put, if a creature dies within 120 foot for the next minute, you may have them immediately come back to life as if by the reincarnate spell. This is your time to kill us all. <laughs> no consequences! <laughs> Wait, will they remember? Oh, there he is. They will remember. Yes, reincarnate but doesn't you... take... It literally keep your memories. Here is the thing that's probably going to fuck that... Uh, oh, plan over. As the other one shimmers, just as a person in the crystal, and a banquet of food is summoned into the room. <laughs> More mystery food! And here is the thing. Despite the fact that there is mystery food, you feel compelled to eat it. In fact, this wakes you up, Marquis, and you are hungry. Oh, he he literally just woke up like a hobo entranced by the, by the fucking mystical arm of a but pie. There is just but this air horn yawn that just like, I don't, it's so fucking loud. Quite literally, nice. As if all the sound that was compressed is let loose. It should be noted. Even Bernard comes out sweet, even Mini Coke and the Raven comes out sweet. Even the Dryads are eating. I don't want make... that. I, I want to try and resist this. Nice um, you summon a banquet of food and everyone in a hundred foot radius sent it on you. Sits down to eat together until the food is gone, regardless of whether they were hostile. <laughs> And Miss Goose is like, I don't wanna. <laughs> I will that allow is, people uh, to try and resist. I will allow people to try and resist this, but it's gonna be high uh, DC. Are we rolling? Wisdom save. Uh, yes. No. Oh. Oh. It's like a forced parlor. You know what? I'm okay with this. Miss Goose isn't. <laughs> Basically, the best way to put it is. As good as the feast was in the other room, this is even better. Think of the idea of that hog that you all ate. Replace it with an actual proper wild boar now. I I am going at this with rav with violent ravenousness. Cog? Mm. You are fine. And it's a good job that your suit isn't sentient, otherwise it would be eating. Eat. I'd imagine that would look quite a lot like uh, Gur and uh, Invader Zim when they eat. Pretty much. It would just be I'm flowing guessing... around rather but, than going into but, anything. I mean, the suit has a mouth. Guy fails as well. The suit has a mouth, but it doesn't have a will of its own. Oh, that's true. Does uh, Miska fail as well? Miski... Or Nam's uh, Naza, you try and resist, but you just look over to Unasaur just going ham on this bloody wild boar and just give in. <laughs> uh, Miskeef, you're trying to resist. You think you're resisting, you don't want to. So you look down and realize that you're already halfway through a cupcake. What? Not again. What Slanesh <laughs> Palace bullshit is this? I mean, quite literally, the druids don't, uh, the dryads don't even thrive off of normal food, and yet they're still eating it. It's just coalescing in their mouths and just kind of flowing back down onto the ground. Uh, uh, interesting thing to wake up to. Like, Miss Gift's just like, very like, I'm visibly upset about this. Why are you so upset? I don't like eating strange magic food. Last time it turned me into this. I'm just laughing at the idea that you somehow end up cast casting that kind of wild magic while in the vampire's lair. Everyone stops the fight mid-fight just to go eat. I think you've got some odd hang ups. Story. Right. Can... 
Is all that we do is just eat? Is that all that happens here? Mm, I believe so. Miss Giff is just not responding to the, like, you got a little weird hang of things, just, like, very discontently. Yep. After, could have been. After that, the food is all gone. The meter is up to, with that extra crystal deposited, probably around 75%, just a bit more needs to be added. Ah. How much shit is still dislodged after, it's... well... It seems to be, there's still quite a bit on the ground that could be picked up and deposited, but the crystals themselves seem to be growing at a rate as fast as you are breaking them. I'll just start picking shit up okay. and bring it to the bucket. <laughs> uh, I'll say there's like a, a one that's roughly... I'll pick up the biggest one I can see. Yep, it's another meals besides one, which you know will finish off the bucket. But I do. Oh yeah, no, you're immune. Mm. I rolled a yes, nat twenty. <laughs> Nazi just picks it up. The shimmer just tries to cover, and just does not work. Not just that. too angry to magic. <laughs> which is funny, because if you rage, you can't cast spells. <laughs> And as you deposit it and slam the bucket closed, the panel flashes green, and you hear locks be removed from the door. A little celebratory confetti cannon. This has been my least favorite room. You close the oh, bucket, oh, oh. you ring the bell, you ring the bell again, you ring the bell several more times, the tentacles come out and gone soon. I want to point out <laughs> that, uh, that the company. sight of, um, of uh, Unosaurus eating is, it, it's exceptionally violent. I lived with a hag. Like, the best way I could think about it is if you've seen those videos where it's like Tasmanian devils trying to eat. Not far off. Again, I, I lived with a hag. I think I've seen worse. I don't know. Like the way I imagine a hag eats is, I can't remember the how she name. eats. It's how she, what she does to other people. That's best. But I'd imagine it'd be like, I think it in Return of the King that when Pippin's singing the song and that Mad King's eating. Uh, you just, uh, fucking um, Derridan or whatever his name is. Yeah, the where you just see like yeah. chowing down on the like cherry tomatoes, and it's just like going everywhere. Yeah. But yes, the door locks been removed. Was it a door that opened inwards or outwards? It opens outwards. Okay, Nanza walks over to the fucking door and kicks it open. <laughs> Let's leave this fucking place. <laughs> I don't know why you all seem so upset with it. I got a nice nap out of this. I feel nice and refreshed. Yeah. You feel a slap on the top of your head mm -hmm. as you say that, uh, Marquis. It's mini. Uh, yes, I will fix it. No need to get grouchy about it. But I mean, there probably is a need to get grouchy about it. You did lose a limb, but hey. No, I just heard that Discord. Hmm? Noise. At least, well. at least you're able to give people. It's because we got a sack. Uh -huh. yeah, I know. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Hey, That's Dad. so funny where people the don't know the uh... unison thing that you had there was beautiful. It happens more frequently than you would think. Can we just state okay. we now have that we now have those voice lines recorded for future reference. Oh, the first time we've said it while you've been recording. You're fucking welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your kick down the door. Door is kicked down. Where do you end up? You see a nice change 
from the what was called wintry room, now more damp spring room with crystals, you see a library up ahead. A vast library with several different rows and a few books on plinths. Ah, oh, shite, it's books. Something that can't technically be smashed. Watch me! Smash book. I was, I was about to say, you haven't tried hard enough. You know what? Axe cuts through a lot of things. I don't read good. Yes, but that's not smashing, is it? I see what you did there. It was clever <laughs> and disgusting and filthy. I loved it. Um, anyways, what is the deal with this room? Hmm. What doth mine... It's the memory? library. Is it just a library? Or is it something that appears to be just a library? When it comes to magic shit, things are really just a library. This is where Unasaur finds the freaking book dragon. Book dragon? Yeah, it's a dragon literally made out of book pages. So, I'm assuming that you're going into your memories to try and work this out, Cog? Yep. Should be noted as well that from here you can't see any other doors, but this is a large room with a lot of large shelves. But if you can't see any other doors in a room with shelves... <gasps> Secret tunnel! Secret tunnel! There we go. Through the mountains. As you are checking your memories, in a story, you've got to pick up a book. Mm. Just to prove that a book can be smashed. Mm -hmm. And as you do, so. Before you could even try and grab hold of this book, this book lunges off the shelf and falls to the floor. Medic! I stabbed One of us is that again? It was going through in a cycle soon as I was trying to pick up a book off the shelf to smash it. Oh no, I was asking which one of us was Medic. No, I, I yelled Mimic. I heard medic. I apologize. No, no. Uh, Unasori yelled mimic and tried, and then goes to stab the book. Yep. Make me an attack roll on it. Yep, you thrust your sword down before it can even try and get up and pin it to the ground as it stops moving. Book successfully smashed. Oh, that was stab, but okay. Stabbing is a kind of smashing. Smashing is less through and more break. Arceus is a bit of a connoisseur on smashing things, honestly. You find the crypt file. Yes. And translated from deep speech. Even though you can read deep speech anyway. <laughs> but I mean translated for the viewers, the listeners, because I'm not pulling up a deep speech trap English thingy translator. All of them. You'd be surprised how many of those are out there. I've got like one's bookmarked for Aquium and for Draconic. Neat. Oh. Essentially put <gasps> this is just a library. This is where he stores any knowledge gained through books, history on all the different planes, world politics, kill me. religion. I don't think all of them are books. Basically, any point of information about any of the histories and such, there's probably something on it here. Well, it's just a simple library with a lot of information. 
There's a few I'll areas of look. interest that do stick out. Oh. And a couple of them you can see from your position. So it does seem to be like a little second floor to this. Kind of like how some libraries are where you get like the little staircase built into it to get up to it. From the top left of the area, you can see kind of like a purplish red light glowing. That's for what is labeled spicy. Oh yeah, I forgot this dude's lusty. Yeah, you get the feeling you don't want to go up there. You see an area that is pretty much just described as... In the original architect's notes, it is described as... Species catalogued. With the right, fan page writing underneath basically translating that over to... Cooking. And the plips in the middle are simply labelled as magic. Well, it's a shame none of us are wizards. Oh no, wait. My brain. There is one that yeah, is a wizard. Yes, yeah, there is a wizard. <laughs> shame that none of us are wizards. You just get Two cold eyes on one cold, large, smiling grin focused on you. Hey, you haven't been contributing recently. I forgot you existed. <laughs> they were here last session. Were they? Yeah. They looked in My and just had like the sad well because they saw their past self before they got cursed. <laughs> Don't judge me. There's a magic section, go read, you nerd. They yeah, have a point. Me as we will just <laughs> simply respond. Given I am with the magic, I know how dangerous the magic can be. Hmm. Our refrain. But there are magic books that don't need you to be a wizard to use. Interesting. Why fuck off? Is there any books in that library uh, that have any title concerning? Like, magical sleep things. You're not quite sure as you'd have to go up to the area of the magic books to read the titles. But the... Uh, basically, we're, how it's laid out. There are just two shelves, like one to your left, one to your right, going long into towards the plinths. So you'd have to head that way anyway. I will do so. Is there enough space for me to, like, stand on a shelf? To look at those books? Uh... I'm assuming you mean, like, with how the shelf is, is there, like, enough space where the books are sunken enough that you can stand on the shelf and look at what the titles are, kind of thing? Yeah. I'd say most likely no. They are like title up to the edge. Okay. We just find a book on hags and their habits. Um, Nanda will offer a shoulder if uh, Miss Keith needs it. She will take it because she can't. She is too little to really okay. look at any of the higher up books. So, Nanda is also going to look at the books for reasons. <laughs> as you head up to the middle area. There seems to be three books in particular on plinths. Each of which do give off like a bit of an odd feeling. You, you two can make me investigation checks if you wish. Okay. Five on Nanza. 
they're magical. Uh, one of them does definitely grab your eye, though, compared to the other two. Was pretty much it looks like it's bound in flesh with a large toothy like grin on the front. Yes, let's summon deadites. <laughs> Only if you remember the three words. I don't know. I never saw the Evil Dead. Oh. <laughs> I just see the kill counts. <laughs> Wait, no, no. The three, you know, it's if you remember the three words, you won't summon the Deadites. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She was wanting to summon the Deadites, so she doesn't need to know the three words. Uh, Miss Keith? Hi. The other two books are a bit weird. Me? Mm -hmm. One of which, its pages seem to be kind of rustling as the book shakes on the plinth. The cover seems to be blank. The other one looks like, what could it only be described as like a fairy tale book? Book of fairy tales and a shaking book. And of course, the fleshbound book with the grin. Yeah, she's not going to touch that one. Um, is this shaking book like held down at all? No. By anything? No. Hmm. Can I hop onto the point? Yeah, there's enough room like at the side of the book's top up. Basically, like, the plinths are wide enough that you could actually open up a book on top of it. Okay. I'm going to hop off uh, Nanza and onto the plinth first with the fairy tale book. Okay. The fairy tale book is written in what seems to be Elven. Uh, I can't read. And the language of food. <laughs> can't read in Elven or can't read? I can't I read can't in read. Elven. I only know Common and Infernal. This sign won't stop me. I can't read. I mean, I know Sylvan, but it's not Elven. <laughs> With Sylvan, you'd probably like no a few of the words and that like you get like a rough gist of what it's saying but it's like basically like deep not deep speech uh under dark compared to common kind of thing or like a dutch person trying to talk to a danish when neither of them speak each other's language that is actually pretty accurate i know <laughs> <laughs> Plus, given how it looks, there's probably pictures. You could probably get a gist of what the idea is. Oh, The doggo just did a really high pitch yawn. Oh. From the cover art itself, looks like a lone elven child in a forest. And the book on the freaking flint next was is still going to... <laughs> yeah, it's still like just vibrating. You can see like the page is kind of having like a bit of a wave like motion. Mm. Do we touch him? I don't know. Should also Sometimes be touching that... magic y things is bad. Should also be noted that from the plinth there is pretty much two directions. It basically acts like a T-junction. To the right is a door, but you can also see the staircase going up to the second floor. And to the left is also a door. Mm. Mm. I'm going to just tap the book with my paw. Which one? The fairy tale one. 
You tap it, nothing happens. This thing weirds me out. Magic books are weird. I mean, fairy tale books aren't technically magic. That one is just kind of pointing at the one next to us. I I also just gesture to the stabbed book on the floor. Books aren't magical; they're just bitey. That one's literally wavy. Oh. And it's shaking. <laughs> it's shook by its own knowledge. I'm gonna try and open the first the cover of the fairy tale book. Okay, so you open up the page. Mm -hmm. The wording is in Elven. It's hard to understand, but yet again, it seems to be a continuation of the cover of a lone Elven child wandering through the forest. Wait, uh, apologies. Um. You said it was an Elvish? Yes. Yeah. Marquis can read Elvish. Are you up at the flints? I'm not, but I didn't know if... I, sorry, I've kind of been... I had to get on the phone, That's so I don't fine. know if it was announced or anything. I just got back. Okay. Uh, uh, Miss Keith did mention it's in Elvish. Uh, however, as you're reading it, Miss Keith, as you're just looking at this picture... Mm-hmm. You feel a cold breeze. Mm -hmm. You look around to see where it comes from. Mm -hmm. All yep. you see is forest around you. Just kind of starts and goes, there. There. To everyone else, what essentially happened is Miski opened up the book, looked at the art, tried to read the text, couldn't read it, and then got sucked inside the book, and the book closed. The book has eaten the, um... Sable? Weasel? Yeah, Sable. I would like You're to state... Bad. I told you so. Just... Really, um, is just in the book screaming. Magical places. Uh, what is the title of the book? Little Girl Lost. Fitting. Yeah. Uh, underneath it, part one of two. I search for the second where's... part. <laughs> yeah, where's part two? Part two, we'll have to wait until next week as we are ending it there mm. on a nice little chunky cliffhanger of Miss Keith being lost in a fairy tale. Miskiff is literally just standing there screaming obscenities. In my children's book. Take that, winch. I imagine the text just changes. It's just Miskiff just there, like, how Paul's up just screaming, and the sex is just all, like, obscenities now. Oh, yeah, no, on the cover, it's not a little elven girl anymore. It is basically a little sable, just hands up to the sky, like, ah. That's inappropriate. She's not even a sable. Well, yes, we are ending it there for this week. So I hope you all enjoyed today's session. I oh, it is coming yeah. up to like two hour mark, so I feel like it's a good place. Given it's also fair enough. Uh, also, that way we're going to get far ahead without uh, Jack or Inferno. Yeah. You will. If you enjoyed this, do check out Star Plunder and uh, Simon's Through the Fog over on Spotify, Echoes of the Past over on Jogball Keeper's channel, and yes, also over here, Manchester by Night at Dusk, followed shortly by just Manchester by Night, once that properly starts up. All right. And also, by the time this video will go up, 
we will have a new episode of Observation Duty out for you all to watch. So let us know if you want to see more of that as well, and we will see you next time on The Devil Dialogues. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.